So if we look at the general deduction formula, we have now discussed already when carrying on a trade, expenditure and losses actually incurred during the year of assessment. Now we are going to look at the next part which means in the production of income. This is one of the more important parts of the general deduction formula. Now what does in the production of income mean? So first up, let's remember what income means. The definition of income, section 1, says gross income less exempt income. So let's quickly talk about that. So if you earn dividends We know it is gross income, it must be included in gross income, but what do we also know about dividends, local dividends? Section 101K says it is exempt. Section 101K is our exemption section. Dividends is our gross income section. So, if we apply this formula, gross income less exempt income, what is our income amount that comes from the dividends? Null. So, what is the income here? No. So I want you to understand, if we have a situation like this, we cannot claim deductions on any expenses incurred. So as I said, we had to pay, because remember now you've invested in shares, that's where you're earning the dividends. So they say you had to pay admin fees to a broker of 100 rands. Can you claim it? No. Why? Because there's no income that you've produced. So there must be an amount there. So if it's an amount where only something where it's partially exempt, for example, something else, right? And this is obviously just thumb suck. It's the principle I want you to understand. Income is a hundred thousand. The exemption is seventy thousand. In a case like that, there will be income, and you should be able to claim a deduction. Okay, so that's that's the one first principle. Now, let's talk about the rest of the situation. So, if you spend money paying your auditors, audit fees, if you spend money to buy stationery, if someone sues you and you have to pay damages, all of those amounts, can you claim a deduction for it? How do we know? We test it against the general deduction formula, and we test and specifically against this in the production of income. Now, what it means, what the production of income said, is it tells you that an amount must be closely connected to the income activities of the taxpayer. That basically means it must be a part of your business. They tell you it must be an inevitable concomitant of income earning activities. What does inevitable means? It means unavoidable. But there's another word I also want you to use there, necessary. This might be better. And concomitant means part. So it means it must be a necessary part of doing your business. So, let's quickly think about it. Audit fees. Is that closely connected to your income and activities? Is it a necessary part of your business? Yes. You don't want to pay it, but law tells you that you have to. We are obviously now assuming that you have to. Right. Even if you make a voluntary deduction, that can be, that's obviously a business expense. The same as paying for water electricity, and telephones will be. So let's talk about it. So the questions that were asked, there were two court cases that discussed it and the most important one is the Port Elizabeth Electric Tramway Company case. This is the case and this is what we just talked about here at the bottom that tells us that we need to do the close connection test. we asked these two questions. What action gave rise to the expenditure and is this action closely connected to the income and activities? Okay, so I'm going to explain first that principle with my little example I always always use. But I think it's a nice one to remember. Right, here's your company or a company bus limited. This is based on the Port Elizabeth Electric Tramway Company. Now, back in the Port Elizabeth Electric Tramway Company days, they had trams running around. Very like a, more like a train. Obviously, we don't, we're not going to use that, so we're using now a bus. Right, so here's a bus. 
and your company has a number of buses and they transport people around. Unfortunately, today, the bus driver was involved in an accident. He drove into a couple of people, right? And unfortunately, they were passed away or badly hurt. The bus driver also passed away. The families of these people and the bus driver sues us, Bus Limited, and the court says yes, we need to pay damages to the people of 1 million rands, let's say, to compensate them for their loss. Now, we are carrying on a trade. It is an expense or a loss, you can, however you want to view it, that was actually incurred because the court said we must pay it, we've got a legal obligation during the year. Is it in the production of income? So now the question that we have to ask ourselves is what action gave rise to the expenditure? The bus driver was involved in an accident, people were injured or killed and therefore there was damages we had to pay. Alright, so that's what happened. Is that action to this bus accident closely connected to our income earning activities an unavoidable part and necessary part Right, so we would like to think it's not necessary, but unfortunately, what do we know about accidents and buses and vehicles? It happens. So can we say that it's a part of our business? Absolutely. So yes, this is in the production of income, and you will be allowed to claim that as a deduction. Okay? That's the first principle then. The Joffe case then said, ask, is it an inevitable concomitant? So that's what we already saw. Is it an unavoidable part? Now what I want you to just explain to you about the Joffe case is the following. Again, it's loosely adapted in the case. So there's a tunnel that we want to build. And we have people working in the tunnel. But this company, this construction company, is a little bit dodgy. And they don't use the right cement in this tunnel. They use cheap cement. So this cement, this tunnel collapses and the people are badly injured and some of them are killed. Their families sue us. The courts say yes, we have to pay damages of one million rands. Can we claim that as a deduction? So, the Port Elizabeth Electric Tramway Company case said, do the close connection test. Ask these two questions. What action gave rise to the expenditure? People were injured when the tunnel collapsed, when we used, because remember this will come through a court case, when we used inferior quality cement. Okay? Is this action closely connected to the income activities? Is it an unavoidable, an inevitable concomitant, an unavoidable part of doing business, the Joffe case? No, it is not. You should use the correct quality cement. This is, no, this is an unnecessary accident that happened that could have been avoided. So no, it is not closely connected to the income earning activities and therefore you will not be able to claim that as a deduction. Okay, so let me use another example. We'll go back to Bus Limited. Now, same thing, there's a guy going and he drives around the bus and he's involved in an accident. But we find out that the driver was drunk. So, we already saw now, and this is important for you, that this Joffe case says negligence is avoidable. So what would happen in this case with the, the bus driver? Yes, the bus driver was negligent, but were we negligent as a company? So think about it. Ask the question. What action gave rise to the expenditure? A bus driver was involved in an accident. He was drunk. Is that closely connected to our income earning activities? No, he shouldn't be drunk. But did we know it as a company? So let's say he came to work that morning, he was perfectly sober, and during the day he drank. If there is no way for us of knowing, then the bus driver is negligent. So that is an unavoidable. So what is the risk then? Then the action, the unavoidable risk there is that yes, sometimes your employees mess up and they get drunk on the job, and this is what happens. So that would still be allowed as a deduction because you can't control every action of your employees. What is different? 
if he came to work drunk, we saw it, the management of the company saw it, and then they basically said, you know what, it's fine, just don't be caught. And then he was involved in an accident, because then the company was negligent. Okay, so we look at it from the company's perspective. Right, so those are the most important. Then just quickly, guys, remember we've spoken about situations. If I go and I buy shares and I earn dividends of 100,000 rands, those dividends will be exempt. And then the income there is null, so we can't claim it. So we had things like broker fees, we told where the person charged us to buy the fees and all of these fees, let's say it's broker fees of a thousand rands. Can we claim this deduction? We said no because there's no income. What I want you to just see is that there was a court case, the Drakensberg Garden Hotel case that said if you buy, if you borrow money to buy shares, so we go to the bank to buy these shares and we have interest that we've incurred of a thousand rands. Let's actually use that rather than our broker fees, although that would still be applicable. Interest of a thousand rands. Can we claim it as a deduction? The answer is no. But what the Drakensberg Garden Hotel said, if I go and I buy shares, and the reason I'm buying the shares is not to earn dividends, but to ensure the continuance of my business, then it will be allowed as a deduction. Okay, so what does that mean? What happens with the Drakensberg Garden Hotel is that there was a plot of land and there was an hotel on it. Okay, assume that's a hotel. The land was owned by, let's say, X Limited, and the hotel was owned by Drakensberg Garden Hotel. So basically they erected this hotel there with permission on the land which they were leasing. So they were leasing the land from X Limited. X Limited well, then decided that it was going to close down or was going to go out of business. And there was a risk for the Garkensburg Garden Hotel that this land would be sold to someone. And then when the leases and things came to an end, they wouldn't renew it. And then this whole hotel, think about it, the actual hotel which is your entire business, you can't get guests anymore because now it's on someone else's property. So what the Drakensberg Garden Hotel then did is they went and they borrowed money from the bank and they bought X Limited shares. All of the shares. Why? So that they can control the land for their other business. In that case, the interest that they incurred was allowed as a deduction because the reason they bought the shares in X Limited was not to earn dividends but in order to secure the business. Right, and then just a sub Nigel case, guys, very simple. It says that if you incur expenditure in this year, but the income will only be earned in the future year, you can still claim it in this year. So, for example, if I go and I buy a stack of invoices and I only start using those invoices next year when I sell things, I can still claim it now. So, it doesn't have to be in the same year.